Hello, my name is Thomas Healy, and I'm the founder and CEO of Hylian. So to kick off the presentation, uh, you know, the overview that we're going to be going through is electrification and how electrification is coming to the trucking industry. And as this audience knows better than anyone else, electrification is the wave of the future for this industry. We're going to move towards electrified trucks. But the big question is really, where's that electricity going to come from in order to power these vehicles? So as we look at moving towards electrified solutions, there's really three types of vehicles that the industry is considering. We've got the fully electric vehicles, which are like the uh, Tesla plug-in truck. We've got fully electric hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, which use hydrogen locally on board in order to produce electricity through a fuel cell on the vehicle, as well as we've got fully electric natural gas trucks, uh, which is where Hylion is focused. And this powertrain uses an onboard natural gas generator in order to be able to produce electricity on the vehicle and charge the batteries while you're going. And so throughout this presentation, we're really gonna chat about, you know, what this shift towards electrification looks like and what are the pros and cons of each one of these solutions. So to kick it off, uh, I just wanna share a little bit more about Hylion and what we do as an organization. So. Uh, we're a company, we actually recently just uh, started tr publicly trading on the New York Stock Exchange uh, a few weeks ago here. And uh, our whole focus as a company is bringing electrified solutions to the commercial vehicle space. Uh, we are located down here in Austin, Texas, and you know, there's a few things that are really unique about what we're doing. But um, to mention a few of them, you know, one is that our approach is we're focused on the powertrain. Uh, so we're not trying to reinvent the entire vehicle. We really see the area for opportunity is to come in and re redo the powertrain of the truck as opposed to the whole vehicle from the ground up. And as mentioned before, the focus is electrification, bringing electrification solutions to the market. We already have some solutions that we're uh, shipping to some fleets across the country. And ultimately the goal here is that we're driving towards a cleaner planet. We're reducing emissions. We're making these trucks cleaner uh, and better for the environment. So the state of alternative fueling, I mean, we're in this a position right now where 90 something percent of the trucks that are out on the road are run off of diesel. And you know, there's a ton of discussion about electrification right now and a ton of energy and effort going towards developing electri electrified vehicles but we're just at the early, early rollout stage of these solutions. And as mentioned in the kind of kickoff of this presentation, there's really three types of solutions that are coming forward. You've got you know, plug-in, hydrogen fuel cell, and natural gas electric. And so as we look at these three types of solutions, you know, the way Hylion is kind of approaching is saying, you know, the number one most important thing is infrastructure um, because when you take an electric truck, you really need to consider where are you going to refuel or recharge that vehicle? And from a practical standpoint, how are you going to do it? And once you can figure out infrastructure, then you can start looking at things like what's the actual cost of operation and what are the actual emissions that come from the vehicle? So to kick things off, you know, we wanted to share a quick diagram here uh, that shows what's kind of the progression of actually making this fuel, right? Because we hear a lot of times that you know, oh, if you run a, a fully electric truck that plugs into the grid, it's a totally clean and you know, low cost solution. And, and while that can be true if you're sourcing all of your electricity from uh, wind and solar or hydro, uh, the reality is, is across the US, not much of the fuel actually comes from those clean renewable sources. A lot of it is coming from coal, a lot of it from natural gas, and some even from nuclear, right? I mean, it's, it's a big spread across the U.S. of where the electricity comes from. And so this graph just kind of shows, you know, how, how we looked at it, where, you know, with, with natural gas, you have this unique fuel source of renewable natural gas, which is something that is, uh, is sometimes overlooked in the industry, which is really a process of capturing methane coming off of landfills and dairy farms, and then capturing that and being able to put it into the pipelines that then ultimately provide the fuel that will go in these trucks. And so renewable natural gas has some really unique properties, uh, including being you know, potentially net carbon negative for the environment, which means not only is it you know, get you to uh, zero emissions, it actually gets you below zero because the, that methane would have normally just been gassing off into the atmosphere and creating pollu pollutants coming off of these you know, places like landfills. Versus if we can capture it and run it, run it in a vehicle, the emissions that come out of that tailpipe are a lot cleaner than what the methane just coming off of the landfill would have been producing. 
So the other big benefit with RNG is that, you know, as mentioned before, that gets pumped right into the pipelines. Uh, and we've got a natural gas uh, infrastructure, pipeline infrastructure set up all across the U.S. And, you know, many of the states here in the U.S. have uh, quick and easy access to natural gas. And then ultimately, you, you set up a refueling station that, types, uh, that taps into uh, the, that natural gas pipeline, and now you can refuel your vehicle off of that. When you look at electricity, as you know, widely known, I mean, and every, everyone here in the U.S. knows it's you know there is an electric grid infrastructure set up, but the question is, can that grid really support electric semi trucks? There was a study that was actually done that showed uh, two mega chargers, the Tesla chargers, to be able to recharge uh, their electric semis when they're doing a fast recharge, actually consume more electricity than the entire Western Star manufacturing plant. So two rechargers is more than an entire truck manufacturing plant. And so that's a, you know, putting these vehicles on the grid is a huge demand load um, for being able to, to supply that much electricity. We've even had some conversations with fleets where they've gone to their utility providers. Some have just been told, you know, there isn't that much excess electricity. We've heard from others that uh, they can get that much electricity, but they need to redo the transformers and all the lines coming into their facility. And we've heard quotes up to, you know, $30, $30 million uh, to do that sort of uh, an infrastructure change. Um, now, with that being said, there are some areas where cheap and, and renewable electricity is abundantly available. And that makes a ton of sense to use that for electric semis. And then the last one is hydrogen fuel cells. Uh, you know, often thought of as, you know, kind of a very clean, uh, you know, um, um, fuel source for vehicles. But the reality is, is right now, a lot of the fuel, uh, a lot of the hydrogen that is produced here in the U.S. is actually coming from steam methane reforming, uh, which in many instances is actually a more pollutive uh, fuel source, uh, more pollutive than just even running a co conventional diesel truck. So when you get to, you know, that sort of metrics, it's like it, it wouldn't make sense to, to use a, a hydrogen plant that is a, you know, extremely pollutive source, uh, you know, and, and then produce that hydrogen to, to run it in a, a zero emissions vehicle. So um, now there are clean sources of hydrogen. There's electrolysis, which, uh, you know, does require you to have, uh, you know, clean renewable uh, energy in order to, to produce that hydrogen, but it is possible to kind of create that, that zero emission hydrogen. But it's a very, very small segment of the hydrogen that's made today. Uh, it comes from those types of sources. Then ultimately the hydrogen needs to be distributed to a refueling uh, station and that refueling station needs to be produced and created. Uh, right now, there is not a pipeline set up uh, across the US for hydrogen. So either that infrastructure uh, to be able to move hydrogen around would need to be made, or we're gonna be shipping it in trucks or we'll have to produce it locally at the fueling station. So a lot of infrastructure costs and setup that still needs to happen in order to make hydrogen achievable. And then ultimately, you know, that's just one part of the equation is infrastructure. And, uh, and then, you know, you really have to then go look at what's the actual cost of getting that fuel. So with RNG, CNG, we're seeing fleets that, you know, are buying fuel at, at a dollar per diesel gallon equivalent. Uh, with the electric grid, uh, we actually source these numbers from, uh, from Tesla. If you go plug in a, uh, a a Model S or Model 3 right now at a supercharger, you're going to be getting charged about $7.26 per diesel gallon equivalent of uh, recharging your, your car with um, or your truck with electricity. And then the last one, hydrogen. Uh, hydrogen costs are still very high right now. Uh, it's at about $11.90 per diesel gallon equivalent. So one of the huge benefits we see with RNG CNG is that low cost and it's there today. Now, Jumping forward to the next slide here, there are future projections of lower cost uh, hydrogen and lower cost electricity. You can see uh, some of these on the graph on the left, but one of the unique things with RNG CNG is not only is it at that price point today, but it's, it's already significantly lower than even what the future projections of hydrogen and electricity uh, are projected to be. So a lot of benefits from the cost side. Then when you look at fueling infrastructure in the middle of this table, 
uh, you know, there's already over 700 natural gas refueling stations set up across the US uh, versus for hydrogen and for electric, that infrastructure has not been established yet. And just taking some of the, the metrics that are publicly available out there, if you wanted to produce the same number of hydrogen stations that there are already natural gas stations, it would be about a $12 billion endeavor to go do so. So a lot of capital expense would be needed to be infused into um, being able to set up that type of network. And then lastly, uh, you know, it comes down to emissions. So as mentioned on the previous slide, you know, these, these vehicles, even though, you know, they have zero tailpipe emissions, it does not mean that, uh, you know, they're kind of well to wheel is really zero emissions. So, you know, when we, when we're looking at kind of emissions of, of the vehicle, we try to step back and look at, well, where did that fuel actually come from? And, you know, how much emissions was produced all the way through to actually being able to drive the vehicle. And so with hydrogen, as mentioned on the last slide, a lot of it's coming from uh, steam methane reforming, which can be more polluted than diesel. With the grid, uh, some of it's coming from uh, those clean sources that have zero emissions, uh, but others are, are pollutive, um, you know, like a coal, a coal power plant uh, produces a lot of emissions. Versus when you move to RNG, renewable natural gas, it has that savings over diesel, but it actually has the opportunity to get down to uh, pretty significant net carbon negative emissions profiles, depending on where that electricity is, uh, or where that natural gas or renewable natural gas is sourced from. And, you know, the last thing to add on this slide is there's a lot of discussions of, you know, using uh, natural gas or renewable natural gas in order to produce hydrogen or produce electricity. One of the things that we looked at was, well, if you take renewable natural gas and then you convert that into electricity for the grid or convert that into hydrogen, there's an efficiency loss there, right? I mean, there's no way to convert something from, you know, natural gas into hydrogen without uh, losing some of that energy. And so, uh, from that standpoint, you know, we looked at it as you're better off just taking that fuel source, that clean fuel source, and moving it right into the vehicle and, and producing the electricity locally, as opposed to going through all those transformations of producing hydrogen, then refueling the vehicle with hydrogen, then producing electricity on the truck to then drive the vehicle. You know, there's a lot of efficiency losses in that process. So uh, that's where our philosophy was, just put the natural gas right in the vehicle and, uh, and produce the electricity locally. Um, and then lastly, a little bit more about RNG is, you know, the infrastructure is already set up across the U.S. here. So there are over uh, 700 stations already out there. And, um, you know, these, these stations are already designed for Class 8 semi-trucks. And one of the really unique things is that uh, a lot of this fuel that is being used at these, RNG, at these CNG stations is already coming from RNG or renewable sources. Uh, Natural Gas Vehicles America actually did a study that just about 40% of the, uh, the fuel used today at stations is actually coming from RNG. So, you know, RNG is not kind of this pipe dream that, you know, a couple of percent here and there are actually using it. You know, it's, a, it's an abundant fuel source. And in California, I think it's even in, you know, closer to the 70, 80% of the, uh, the fuel used at natural gas stations is coming from RNG. So it's here today and it's growing. Uh, as you can see from the, the infographic, there's 110 RNG production facilities that are already operating, and there's you know close to 100 more that are uh, that are in development or already in, under construction. So uh, you know we're coming close to you know almost going to be doubling the amount of RNG production in the years ahead here. So then to wrap things up is just talk a little bit about you know RNG where it is today in vehicles and in the future. So RNG vehicles or CNG vehicles are out there. There are many fleets that are converting over to natural gas. Uh, there are many fleets that also tried natural gas and experienced issues with it. And I think a lot of those issues have started to be overcome in terms of uh, maintenance costs. Uh, but one of the one inch issues that's still out there is just natural gas vehicles are underpowered compared to diesel. So one of our products is our hybrid electric solution that we can actually put on uh, a natural gas vehicle and it adds more horsepower and torque to the truck so it can perform more equivalent uh, to a diesel truck. And then as we look forward in the future, uh, we've unveiled our HyperTruck ERX solution, which is that fully electric vehicle that recharges on natural gas locally. 
Uh, we're super excited to be uh, getting this out to the market here. We'll be doing initial deliveries in 2021 to some fleets, uh, but our initial uh, pre-order customer is Agility Global Logistics. Uh, they came in and placed a thousand unit truck order. And you know the reason I wanted to share Agility was because they had a, a very fascinating and unique way of looking at clean uh, renewable fuel sources to run their truck. So uh, for them, you know, they are uh, per shipping goods for a lot of the, um, the well-known B2C brands that are, are out across the globe. And for Agility, uh, they looked at it as they could shift to uh, the Hypertruck solution and have a significant reduction in the amount of emissions that comes from that vehicle, if not even get it to net carbon negative. And then they can pass those emission savings, those credits onto uh, the actual fleet or the actual company that they're shipping for. So that way, you know, let's take a company uh, like Amazon, for instance, they've been very vocal about how by 2040, they're going to get to uh, net carbon zero for their entire company. Well, if an agility was shipping for Amazon, they could take those emission savings and actually pass it back for Amazon to be able to take credit for it to move towards their climate initiative. But then for agility being the actual shipper, they have the benefit of moving to a low cost solution. Uh, as well as the benefit of not needing to go out and set up a ton of infrastructure in order to be able to already start running these vehicles since that infrastructure is already built out. So it's really a double win. It's a win for the, the company that Agility is shipping for, as well as a win for Agility from a cost and infrastructure standpoint. So uh, so with that, you know, I appreciate you taking the time to listen to uh, you know, a little bit of an overview on kind of where uh, renewable natural gas is today, how it's being used in the trucking industry, and and some of the statistics around it as to where we really see it as the right fuel solution for enabling electrified vehicles going forward. And uh, with that, I'd love to, to kind of transition over to any Q&A that you all might have.